can AI actually teach you things within your research field? So I talked about ChatGPT and ChatGPT is one way that you can use AI to ask questions, but there's now another software on the scene and this software is Teach Anything. This is based on the GPT-3 language model that ChatGPT is also based off of. So you can see if you scroll down, it's powered by OpenAI. That is who has made the GPT model. So what it allows you to do is you can write any question. So you can say like something like, what is obesity? As a very broad question, you can then select your language and then you can select your difficulty level. Easy is going to give an explanation that's a lot easier to understand and profession is going to give something that is what someone in that actual field would probably be able to understand better. And then we can just do get the answer. So it's a very simple answer. It's when someone is too heavy or has too much fat on their body. If you weigh more than you should for your age and height, then you could be considered obese. Now, as researchers, we would probably be looking for more the profession answer. So let's redo it for the profession answer. So it always gives the answer as the principle and then the application. So this defines it more as the medical condition. It's measured by calculating the BMI and it even gives the specific numbers. A BMI over 30 indicates obesity and 25 to 29.9 indicates overweight. And then it's giving some statistics here and basically showing the relation between obesity and health. So this is a very quick, if you didn't know what that was, it will give you the answer. The other thing about this software versus ChatGPT is that ChatGPT is not updated past 2021. This software is actually connected with the internet. So it's using the GPT-3 model, but it's not ChatGPT, which is limited on the knowledge that it actually has. So those are very simple questions. What about more advanced questions in your field? So for example, let's say that you were struggling with a method that you were trying to do and you're trying to figure out how to get it to work. So let's say I had OTC polymer. If you don't know in like biology, you can basically preserve like organs in OTC polymer. And then when you slice them, you still have that polymer attached. So let's say, how can I remove OTC polymer from my tissues without removing any lipids in the tissues. So what I'm specifically asking it is, let's say you're like trying to get this polymer off and every single time you do it, you realize that you lose a bunch of lipids in the process. So I'm gonna ask it, how can I do this without removing any of the lipids? And I'm gonna keep my difficulty on profession and click get the answer. So what it is telling me to do is that I can use a chelating agent such as EDTA to bind to the OTC. And then afterwards, if we read down here, it's telling me that I can then wash my tissue with a buffer to remove any chelating agents from it. And then it can be used for downstream applications. So if you were struggling and maybe you weren't finding really good literature on it, then you can come here and ask this. Like I've always said with ChatGPT, that you need to then take this and say, okay, is this actually valid before just applying it to whatever you're applying it on? And especially before you write it somewhere. Like if you applied this and then you realize lipids were still washed away, like that's an experiment, but you shouldn't just be writing this out for other people because you don't know if this actually works yet or not just because AI generated something. So as another example, I asked if it could suggest three novel research questions in the field of maternal obesity and placental health. So in the principle, it tells me that maternal obesity has been linked to adverse placental health outcomes and gives some examples. And then it gives me three applications, which are three different research questions. And so you can see that this is specific to the UK. And I think it's because this was made in the UK. So a lot of what it's giving is specific to the UK. Now, the question is, are these really novel, right? Like, I wouldn't just take this and start designing a study. You still need to check if this is actually a novel idea or not, just like if you would check anything from Elicit or ChatGPT as well. So I would still go and check if this is novel or not, but this software does give us a way to ask a question to get more updated information than just what ChatGPT could offer. If you want to see how to use ChatGPT for scientific research, I will leave that video here. And if you want to see how to use Elicit to 
brainstorm research ideas, I will leave that video linked there. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more techniques on how to become more efficient in your research, and I hope to see you in the next video.